This video is a short introduction and a broad overview of Paraview, which is a 3D data visualization software. Paraview is a scientific data analysis and visualization software. It is open source, licensed under BSD uh, terms. Uh, it is can be used in any one of these commonly used platforms, Linux, uh, Mac OS, or Windows. The important thing about Paraview is that it can analyze very, very large data set. We'll show you some examples in the next slides. These data sets are generated by several parallel processes, parallel computers uh, running at the same time. Not only the data sets could be large, but because they are, they are large, the visualization can also be done in a parallel way, in the sense that each processor will, visual, uh, will render one portion of the geometry and so on. So the para in parallel uh, para view actually stands for this parallel uh, visualization. Paraview was developed by uh, Kitware in association with several uh, national laboratories in the US, uh, Sandia, Los Alamos, and uh, Army Research Laboratory. Uh, here are some examples of uh, uh, Paraview being used in uh, science, and tech, uh, science and technology visualization. And they're all uh, very massive in scale. This is an example of a tumor cell, which is in red color, attacking, uh, sorry, uh, this is an example of a T cell, which is an immune system cell, attacking a tumor cell, which is this yellow in color. And this is uh, runs into about uh, 100,000 cells at the same time. Here is a simulation of flow in arteries. The large cells are, uh, uh, blood cells, red blood cells, and the small dots here are all plasma. So all of them are visualized, including the flow profiles and the shape of this uh, objects moving. And this is to a macroscopic world. Here is an asteroid that is exploding because of an uh, explosion, Nagatan explosion, and the crack propagation from the core to the periphery is simulated. This is a visualization of uh, water surface temperature uh, on the globe. Here are some engineering uh, applications. This is the uh, flow around a fan and a nozzle, uh, how the local flow is uh, generated and where, where is the mode mixing, where is the higher velocity and so on. This is an IC engine and this is the lines here are streamlined showing the flow uh, around the ice engine as air enters these chambers. And these are all very uh, familiar simulations, uh, familiar diag uh, pictures to most of you. This is a Formula One car and this is a, a motorbike where the uh, lines of air flow around this uh, bike and car are simulated to understand the extent of drag. The basic workflow of Paraview is as follows. You have a source data, we manipulate it and then render it. So this step of using the source data and manipulation is you taking a data in one particular form, you take it to a second particular form. And this also is a type of data, but it is rendered in a visual form. So the mo motion of this uh, data through the sequence of steps is called as a data pipeline. And when you think of Paraview, it's very important that you remember that you're always having a source data, you manipulate and then render. We'll see some examples later. Uh, broadly, whenever you do this large scale simulations seen here, the data is available in a 3D form for several parameters. So it could be, uh, in this case, it could be T cells and then the uh, tumor cells. Here it could be plasma, velocity of the red blood cells and so many parameters are plotted uh, are available at the same time. And we don't want to, uh, they are usually a collection of scalars, tensors and vectors. We don't want to use everything. We want to use a subset of this or carry out some transformation. So that's what we mean by manipulation. And then finally, uh, render them in uh, 1D, 2D or 3D uh, plots. 
the basic layout of uh, ParaView is like this. The, to the first time users, it is uh, pretty complicated because there are so many buttons and uh, options available here. We'll try to simplify this for you. The topmost thing is the menu. So remember that there are four important uh, uh, regions here. The topmost is the menu, which contains all the functionalities like in any software application. Then comes the second region, which is called the toolbar. There are three rows of toolbars, which uh, captures frequently used functionalities from this menu and several other places. The third is the panel. So this is one panel, this is an another panel. So this panel describes the current status of data. Remember we said that the data goes through a pipeline. So this shows, if you go to a particular uh, data in the pipeline, this shows you, you can select the particular data and that this shows you the current status of that data. And finally, we have the viewport where the uh, final uh, output is rendered. When, think, when you think of a para view, the important thing you need to remember is this region. Although many toolbar applications are here, most of the time we'll be interacting with these three regions. And to uh, easily remember this, just remember three questions that you have to ask. What do I need to render? Which is, what is the data I want to render? How I want to render it? And where I want to render it? What, how, and where? So what is specified in this window? How is specified here? and where is displayed here. What? So in this region, we select the file which contains our source data and it undergoes manipulation. So as it undergoes manipulation, the properties of each of this data that is selected are described in this second uh, panel. And finally, once you manipulate it and you say you control the display, it is displayed in the viewport here. We'll see some simple examples, basically uh, a demonstration of how it looks. We are not going to go into the detail of how it is to be done. That is done in detailed tutorials, but uh, this is just to show you a demonstration to get give you a feel of what ParaView uh, is capable of doing. Let's take the simplest example where you have a source data and you directly render it without any manipulation. Let us say we solve the equation del square t equal to zero where t is the temperature, this is the Laplacian. So when we solve it, we get the temperature profile. Once the temperature profile is obtained, we can obtain the heat fluxes, which is given by K del t, which is the heat flux, which is a vector. If it's in 3D, the vector is of uh, has three components. So the source data that we have here are three important things. One is the geometry itself, which describes the surface uh, cross sections and so on. Second is this temperature, which we solved. And third is a derived quantity, which is a uh, flux, which was used in the simulation. And usually most of the solvers will give you the uh, temperature, the, the main variable as well as the gradients of this, because we are solving the differential equation. These variables are already there and the solver simply uh, saves them to a file. So we have geometry, temperature, and three components of fluxes, all in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And the question we want to ask is, I want to gen render Firstly, just the geometry. So I, I'm not interested in these board. Let me just take a look at the geometry. So I take the data and directly render the geometry. That is usually the default view. Secondly, I want to just temp, uh, represent the temperature, but not everywhere. I just want to represent the temperature on the surface. So let's see how this is done. So here we have the source data which is a flange and it's described by these parameters here and the rendering happens here. So what, 
how, how to display that and where. Now we want to display the temperature. So I go there and in the properties, I can select what to display this temperature and then there are gradients, I select the temperature. And then I, the, there are two windows here, I split them and the first one window we have the surface and the second window we have the surface temperature which goes from say 273 to 573. So what, how, and where. We can also do an animation. So suppose the temperature was not just a final temperature that we have, but is a temperature which is a function of space and time. Then we want to see how the temperature starts from the initial condition and varies. So here we have a temperature red color, which is uh, 573 and blue is 273. And there is a play button on the top. So when you play it, you will notice that the temperature moves from, we'll play it again. Uh, the, the temperature diffuses from here by conduction from here to there. So as you play, you will see that the, quickly the temperature is everywhere here. Initially it was only, uh, constant here at uh, 573. So as conduction passes through, the temperature propagates through this and reaches, uh, it spreads in other places. So the time at which the temperature displayed is also displayed here. So you will notice that when we play it again, the temperature, the time also will go from zero to a maximum of 100. A second demonstration we'll see is of source with some manipulation and then pendulum. Consider the same uh, data source where we have a geometry, temperature distribution and flux distribution. So this is a 3D data. Let us say I want to look at the temperature on a given plane. For the same example, let's say I want to describe uh, on some sectional plane, I want to find the temperature. So that is problem number one. Problem number two is uh, I want to look at temperature along a straight line. And also not only um, plot it along a straight line, but also to, to be able to extract it into a spreadsheet. So I have two requirements here. First requirement is on a plane. So first, we have to manipulate this 3D data and get a 2D data and then display it. For the case of a plot, the 3D data need to be extracted to a 1D data along a line and then plot it or extract. So we'll see a quick demo of how this is done. So here we have two different sources. One is a flange and other is a slab. And in this, these are two different file sources, but we want to select only the flange and then carry out some manipulation. So if I open this, I will see a pipeline of this. So this source flange, we have manipulated once and manipulated twice. The first takes a 3D and converts to a 2D, which is a slice. And the second one takes a line out of that. So this is 3D, 2D and 1D. So let's see how this slice is done. For the slice, we need to specify a plane. So this, what you see here in a transparent thing is the actual 3D. In that we have taken a plane. So where is that plane? One second. Yeah. So for the slice, we define a plane. So we show, can show the plane here. So we have defined a plane along this 
section. So this obtains a section. So I, we are able to obtain the whatever we want along this plane. So we have chosen to plot the temperature. So there's temperature and gradient. We have just taken the temperature. So this shows us the temperature along this plane. So we can rotate that and see that this is just a plane and we have the temperature distribution along that plane. And here also blue is 273 and red is 573. So we can have a feeling of how the temperature varies from one end to the other. The second thing that we're going to manipulate is plot over line. So in plot over line, we have defined a line on this plane and extracted all the temperature and flux data there. So what is shown here in red on the left axis is the temperature. So the temperature goes from here to here. So here it is 273, it starts at 273 and goes to, no, it's a little more than, uh, it's about 300 and uh, something, 330 and goes up to 573 along this line. We can also plot the flux along this line, which is shown by the green curve here on the right axis. So the flux, so this way we are able to get, uh, once the solution is there, we are able to extract temperature and uh, other parameters in this case, the uh, partial T by partial Y. We can also extract this data as a tabular form, which is shown here. This is called as a spreadsheet view. So all these are possible. So once you have data here, we can specify locations and extract data, plot them, and then uh, put them into, the, uh, into a spreadsheet file, which can be exported. So to summarize, we have a source, then properties that describe the source and uh, manipulated data, and where to display them. One important and common mistake uh, people make is to uh, forget the connection between one, this panel, this panel, and the viewport. So you will notice that as we click this, this gets activated with a blue border. This is, a, this is the active window, and now this is the active window. Now when we select an active window, you will notice that things here also change. Okay, so what that means is that when we have an active window, there is a corresponding source which has got these properties. So you will notice that in this active window, there are three items which are visible. So this is an eye icon. So if it is present, it means that it is uh, visible. So if we can turn this off, which will take off the plane, we can bring it back or we can turn off the 3D view and bring it back. Similarly, if you select this window, you will notice that in a plot over line, there is no meaning of plotting a 3D thing. So they are by, disabled by default, but the plots we can disable or enable. So whenever we manipulate a data, you should uh, make sure that you've selected the appropriate window. So you're going to manipulate a display here, how you're going to, con how, to con display, how to control the display. So when you're manipulating that, before you manipulate that, you make sure that you have selected the correct uh, active uh, viewport, then these things are on because if you are going to make some change here and this is off, even then you will not be able to see it. So three things to remember, check the, uh, to change the manipulation, check the active viewport, make sure they're turned on. So the next steps is um, uh, you have to carry out a lot of tutorials and the tutorials from the official website paraview.org uh, available when you download the main software, you will also get this Paraview tutorials. So if you have installed Paraview along with OpenFOAM, then you may not have this uh, uh, tutorial, but if, uh, if it is not there, you can get it from the main website. So carry out all the tutorials 
in chapter two, which is basic usage. Uh, as you do the tutorials, uh, you can also verify your results. You can self-validate your results from this uh, Paraview tutorial companion, where you will see whatever you are expected, whatever you see on the screen in your Paraview, you can compare it with what is there in the actual, uh, what you should actually get. To summarize, Paraview is a, a, a so open source software for complex scientific data visualization. The main thing in Paraview is a, a data pipeline. Data pipeline consists of a source data you manipulate through a series of uh, transformations or uh, taking subsets. And then finally, you render them. It is also possible to do transient properties using display transient properties in using Paraview. The example taken here was uh, obtained from CFD project of FOSI, which is an initiative of IIT Bombay. 